I was joking. I know we're not supposed to victim shame, but I really don't give a damn anymore about that. I think this is getting ridiculous. <clears throat> and I've, kind of, I've stayed out of the whole Idaho 4 thing, but now with the stuff that came out today that Ethan was killed in the hallway, why, why are we still just ignoring the fact that this girl, the other roommate, did what she did? I, you know, I, I understand being shocked this and that, but if Ethan was in the hallway, she would have seen it. You can't tell me from the moment that guy left until the next day at 11, 11 something. First of all, all she said was somebody was unconscious. Unconscious. There would have been blood everywhere if his neck was cut. And that thud, whatever, had to have been Ethan hitting the ground. <clears throat> We're just supposed to shut up and not question why that girl did the things that she did. Her story is starting to look a little more and more suspicious to me, and that's just my opinion, but... I, I don't know. For only being, what, two bedrooms on the second floor, and you don't think it, he would have went into that room? It, it's, it's, something strange is going on with all that. To me. In my personal opinion, it just doesn't make sense. If she saw the guy in the house, it could just be a story that after she saw him, she shut the door and locked it. She could have looked out. Why would anybody not look out after everything that just went on, even though she was drunk? If you were freaked out and this and that, there's just no way. Something's not right with her story. I don't know. It's changed several times now between the media and the, and the cops. Obviously, if Ethan was outside of the door, he probably heard what was going on upstairs with the other two girls, which is why the other girl was outside. You know, all that commotion with the dog was probably him trying to lock, get the dog in the room and shut it up. <clears throat> and now we know Xana had, had fought him, basically tried to fight and hold the knife back. Those rooms are not very far apart. There's, there's more to the story, in my opinion, than, than we're hearing. Because this, this doesn't make sense. And I know everyone keeps saying you can't be victim blaming and leave them alone. This is bullshit now. Now it's a little bit hard to do now. It's getting to the point where her stories are not, it's not sticking up very well. First of all, do we even, did they even check to see if she had drank that night? Or are we just going with her word? And I'm not trying to bash the girl. I'm not trying to say things like that, but I don't know why they wouldn't have, you know. I would have gave her a blood alcohol test just because. My God, it happened, what was it, eight hours before? And you're just now calling the, the 911? I don't know. The stories are not matching up to me, and it's, I don't know. It doesn't look good for her, but that's my opinion. I mean, you got someone that just, you literally opened the door the last time and you saw the person that was in the house and you know that he didn't live there. And he was in a mask and everything for Christ's sakes. And then you did just hear, you think of the things that he, she said that she heard. You know, someone in the house, I'm going to help you and stuff like that. Even if she was scared to shut the door, she wouldn't have been able to fall asleep. Then it would have been just straight up dead silence in the house. I mean, that's, except the dog, maybe. And I, there, there was no way with that being as close a vicinity as it was. Ethan, of course, probably didn't get a chance. He may have, the moment he looked out the door, they said since his throat got cut, he, the only noise he probably made was hitting the ground. But if Xana had all those marks on her arms and fingers from the knife and holding it back, she would have been making noise. That girl had to have heard it. I don't give a damn what she says. She had to have heard it. There's absolutely no way. That, Xana's not going to sit in there and have that many, you know, resist marks on her from pushing the knife back and that girl not here. Downstairs, I guess, maybe, I could say. I've, some women, I've noticed, are straight-up dead sleepers when they're drunk. 
But we don't even know if they were drunk. So, I mean, we don't know any of that. I just don't think the story is matching up now. And it's... Her story keeps going further and further to be the unbelievable. I don't know. You know Xana was probably making noise. She was hearing it. I don't care what she says. She was. So even if you were scared, after all that, you're not going to sleep. It would have been silent as shit in the house. You would have got out there and you would have looked. I, I don't know. Something's just not matching up at all. It's really not. I mean, I'm not blaming the girl. I don't, you know, but then again, I can't sit here and say that I... I don't trust anybody, so that's just how I am personally, but... I don't know. Hopefully, they actually get all this information figured out, but... With the way it's gone, things just keep making more and more less sense. Now, if it would have been Xana that looked out the door first, Ethan might have had a chance to, to, get, to take him down, but he kind of got the shit end of the deal there. He probably came out right towards the end of them getting killed up top, upstairs, and then he just probably didn't get a chance to even comprehend what was going on. But again, none of that would have been silent. And they specifically just said Xana fought back because she had defensive wounds on her hands. You know, basically holding the knife back. And she would not have been just silently fighting back. She would have been yelling, trying to get help. Which is kind of dumb that that girl would open her door. I don't even know if I believe the fact that she opened her door anymore. I don't know. I wasn't even going to get involved in this case, but that, seeing all the, this, these articles and news today, and I, I don't think you can sit and keep taking up for it for not calling till the next day. That's that's beyond that now. Because you know for a fact she heard noises. She already admitted to hearing noises. She heard someone talking. If she supposedly saw this guy. And then the whole house goes silent and there's absolutely nothing until they wake up the next day and then look out and say there's an unconscious person. No, but you would have known that he was dead. There would have been blood everywhere from his neck. So either the cops are lying about the information to purposely, you know, kind of mislead people to maybe help with the case, try to get some information out of dumb fuck. I don't know. I just thought I'd say that because to me it, it sounds weird and I think it's a little, we're past the point of just saying, you know, she was scared and you have to understand that that's the position she was in. That, that's bullshit now. Ethan would have been right laying in the doorway and that video that they showed was the bedroom was straight across from her. And you know as well as anybody, even with lights out, you can still see what's around you. And everything that just happened, you would not have went to bed. There's no way. Your, your fucking chest would have been racing. I don't know. But we'll see. It's an interesting case, but... I don't know. It's insane to me that he killed four people in that short-ass amount of time. But I, I'm also one of the people that think he left that knife sheath on purpose. <clears throat> I kind of, to me, it seems more like more of a game. To be honest, if she says she looked out the door and saw him, this and that, you know, a while back, I, I, it clicked into my head that that those two could have had something going on. But I'm not saying that now. But it just a little weird. You know how these cases do end up changing and suddenly one of the innocent people have been hating these girls and this and that. Yeah, that's that's still a possibility. Nobody wants to say it because everyone, yeah, of course wants to act like they're understanding and all this dumb shit, but 
I've watched way too many crime videos and cases. I've watched countless interrogations and so many people you think are just the, the nicest people are behind it half the time, so. And no, I'm not saying that, so don't bitch. But each time something else comes out about the way this went down, and it's not looking good in my opinion for her, so. She could have possibly, if she would have called an ambulance at that point, you know, one of the girls upstairs could have still been alive, or downstairs could have been alive. Eight hours later, no, they would have bled to death. So she could have caused somebody else's death by not actually making the initiative to call the 911. Or at least walking out of the bedroom and looking. Why would you not walk out of the bedroom and look? I don't care how scared you are. That That is just the crybaby excuse right there. Her heart would have been racing. She wouldn't have been able to sleep. And the house would have been dead silent. So... If nothing else, pick your fucking phone up and call somebody. But she did none of that, so it doesn't make sense. So I just, I think we need to get off the fact of stop victim bl blaming and start asking questions because there's a lot of questions now that are straight up going backwards. And she could have saved some lives, so. That's it. I just wanted to say that because it irritates me that you're not allowed to say anything to the damn you know, surviving people or whatever, but the surviving people could have caused some other people to survive if they would have took the initiative. That's it, so thanks.